Hi, this is Julia again. And Dan. This is the video podcast for Section 3 of Chapter 1 of A Student's Guide to the Mathematics of Astronomy. This section is all about rate problems, which are problems such as those involving distance, speed, and time for things that move. And the mathematical relationship between those three quantities is given in equation 1.9 here on page 23, distance equals speed times time. Now, one important thing for this equation is that speed must be constant for the equation to be valid. So acceleration must be zero. And if speed is constant in that equation, then distance is proportional to time. So an example of this given on the next page. You can see here, you're given a distance of 12 kilometers and a speed of 3 kilometers per hour, and you're asked to find the time. We show two different ways of doing this, and one of them is a lot better than the other. In the first way, we simply plug in the numbers we've got. So we plug in 12 kilometers, we plug in 3 kilometers per hour, and we get the time of 4 hours. You can see this in equation 110 and the work just beyond that. But there's an alternative way of doing it that's much better. And in that way, first we solve for time. That is, you isolate the variable you're trying to solve for by itself on the left side of the equation, as we have in equation 111. So there it says time is distance divided by speed, and now you can plug in your numbers of 12 kilometers and 3 kilometers per hour, and of course you get the same answer. So why is this a better way of doing it? Well, just consider, equation 110 solves exactly one problem, because it's got the exact numbers you were given. But equation 111 solves an infinite number of problems, because you can be given any distance and speed, and you can find the time using 111. So a very good rule to remember, before you plug in your numbers, to solve for the variable you're trying to find. And that just means rearrange the equation to isolate that variable. We do another example, starting at the bottom of page 25, of a distance-speed time relationship problem. The example asks, how far does light travel in one year? In this case, we start with the equation that's already solved for distance by itself because we're given the speed and time and distance is the quantity we're trying to calculate. Plugging in the known speed of light and the given time, one year, the distance is calculated to be 9.5 times 10 to the 15 meters. This distance has such a special meaning in astronomy that it's given its own unit. It's called a light year. It's how far light travels in one year. And because, for constant speed, distance is proportional to time, it means the distance an object is away from you is proportional to the time it takes for that object's light to reach you. This phenomenon is called look-back time, and it comes up over and over in astronomy. We've got a little illustration of this. This shows two people standing on the Earth and a bunch of astronomical objects over their heads. What Julie is about to do is to draw in little arrows that represent the light coming from one person, for example, to another. That's you on the upper part of the drawing there. And it takes, if you are five feet away, about five billionths of a second, that is five nanoseconds, for light from that other person to reach you. But the moon is farther away. It's about 380,000 kilometers away. And it takes about 1.2 seconds for the light from the moon to reach you on the Earth because it's farther away. The sun is even farther away. It's 1 AU, or 93 million miles away, and that means that even traveling a billion feet per second, it takes the light about 8.3 minutes to get to you. The stars are even farther away. The star Vega, for example, is about 26 light years away, which means that its light takes 26 years to get to you. And even farther away than, from the stars are the galaxies. The Andromeda galaxy is about two and a half million light years away, so its light takes two and a half million years to get to you. So this phenomenon again is called look back time, and now we've listed the look back times to all these objects. Notice that look back time was in effect for all five of these objects, but on terrestrial scales, things nearby you in everyday life, it's so small as to be negligible. You never notice look-back time. But on astronomical scales, like to stars and galaxies, the times become quite noticeable. Okay, there's only one more subsection in this section, and that's 1.3.2. It's a generalization. It's called amount, rate, and time problems. 
And this just says instead of distance, if you consider a generalized amount, and instead of speed, if you consider rate, you can get a similar set of equations. Look at 112, for example. It says amount equals rate times time. This is a generalization of distance equals speed times time. This might come in, for example, if you're doing a fuel consumption problem or money spending rate problem. And on the next page, we have an example of the same equation solved for time, which says time is equal to amount divided by rate. So the main points in this chapter are these. Distance equals speed times time, and time equals distance over speed, just a rearrangement of the same equation. These equations are only valid when speed is constant. Next thing is a general principle. Whether you're doing these kind of problems or another kind of problem involving equations, always solve for the thing you're looking for before you plug in numerical values. And lastly, amount equals rate times time and its rearranged version, time equals amount over rate. Those equations are also only valid when that rate is constant. That's it for this podcast. Join us for section four. Thanks.